All right, using a separate sheet of graph paper, we're going to graph this. I'm not going to use a separate sheet of graph paper just so we can stay on the same sheet. Right away, by finding the y-intercept, by plugging in 0 for x, you know that this 5 is the y-intercept. So I'm going to plot that. Secondly, the middle of your quadratic formula, or the front end of your quadratic formula, um, our negative b over 2a here is what the vertex, the x-coordinate of our vertex is. And so x equals negative b over 2a is how you find sort of where it's centered around. And so you have negative 8 over 2 times 2, negative 8 divided by 4, so negative 2. That's the x-coordinate of your vertex. If you plug that back in to find y, you can find the y-coordinate of your vertex. You know that it's going to be centered around, oops, negative 2 is what I meant to do. Um, square it, plus 8 times negative 2, plus a 5. So you have 2 times 4, minus 16, plus 5. 8 minus 16 is a negative 8, plus 5 is a negative 3. So, vertex is negative 2, negative 3. And because we have the, the axis of symmetry over here 2 to the left, you can reflect this point over here. So that's how you do it. You're going to have your graphing calculator available to you on the test, so why not use it? Stick this into y equals, graph it, and pick out what graph fits the best. Um, remember that you can find maxes and mins by using that calculate menu. There's our negative 2, negative 3 like we found out. But if you hit the calculate menu right above trace, hit the second button. We have a minimum because that's the lowest it gets. And then it asks for the left bound. And so go to the left of where your minimum is. Hit enter. Then it says right bound, so go to the right of where the minimum is. Hit enter. And so it approximates it. It's given me negative 1.999. It's negative 2. So that's one way you can find the vertex if it's asking you something like the next question is. Um, we're going to find it three different ways. First way we're going to use, with standard form, the negative b over 2a again. And so negative 24 over 2 times 3, or 6. Negative 24 over 6 is negative 4. And then we, when we plug that back in, Negative 4 is what we're plugging in. 3 times 4 squared plus 24 times negative 4 minus an 8. So I'm going to say f of negative 4 is negative 56. And so the vertex is negative 4, negative 56. Now, um, some may argue you only squared a positive 4. Squaring a negative 4 and squaring a positive 4 are the exact same thing. Um, but more mistakes happen on the calculator if you do the opposite. This one is in x-intercept form because we know that if you set it equal to 0, x equals 5 and x equals 9, or negative 9 rather, are the x-intercepts. And so negative 9 is over here, 5 is over here. We know it opens up and so we know the axis of symmetry or, and the vertex are right in the middle of those. How do you find the middle of the two numbers? Average them together. Negative 9 plus 5 divided by 2. Negative 4 over 2, so negative 2. That's the x of the center. Negative 2 smack dab in the middle of negative 9 and 5. And so you find the y value by finding f. Let's just do it the same way f of negative 2. So you take negative 2, 3 times negative 2 minus 5, or negative 7, times 
um, a negative 2 plus 9. So negative 147. And so our vertex is negative 2, negative 147. Again, you could plug this into your calculator just the way it is, 3 times x minus 5, x plus 9. But it goes way down because we got our y of negative 147. So adjust your window if you need to see it. So we want to go lower on the y. So I'm going to adjust it, cheat a little bit because I know what it is, to negative 150 as your minimum value. And there's your minimum. You can trace if you want to get close and if the question just is a, an approximate and you can see your negative 2 and your negative 146. Or you can use your same calculate the minimum. C. This is in vertex form. This is the question you want because you know this minus 6 makes it shift to the right, sort of opposite of what you think, and the minus 12 shifts it down. And so you know your vertex is positive 6, negative 12. Um, again, you can plug it into your calculator and see it. Complex answers, complex numbers, and all that. Thing to remember here, the square root of negative 1 is where i came from. And if you square both sides, i squared is equal to negative 1. And so i squared is not fully simplified. You want to take care of it anytime you see an i squared. So 3 times 2 is 6, minus 12i, plus 4i, minus 8i squared. And so again, that's a negative 1. So you get 6, negative 12, and 4i make minus 8i. And then you get plus 8. So 6 plus 8 is 14, minus 8i. Um, this next one, you've got 2 plus 4i, and then this scalar is what we call it, but we're multiplying just this first one, and so let's distribute that. 2 plus 4i, and then plus 8 minus 4i. This one's a little simpler because you just have to combine your like terms now. 2 plus 8 is 10, and then 4i minus 4i is 0, so your answer is just 10. Next one, you've got still this negative 3, and so let's deal with it the same way. 4 minus 3i, and I'm going to take the negative with the 3, and it's going to change it into addition here after we're done. So negative 3 times a 3 is a negative 9. Negative 3 minus 6i. So then 4 minus 9 is a negative 5, and negative 3i minus 6i, negative 9i. All right, next problem. Solve. Again, it's a quadratic. So I talked before about you can solve it using factoring or the quadratic formula, or sometimes they don't have an x term. And so you can ju just use the square root. If you subtract 64 and then you divide by 4, you get x squared equals negative 16. Undo the square by taking the square root. Any time you take the square root of both sides, you need a plus or a minus. Square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of the negative part gives you the i. All right, next one. You've got three numbers that are multiplied together. Any time you multiply three numbers, you multiply two of them first, and then we'll multiply by the next one. So 3i times 2 is 6i. 3i times 4i, negative 12i squared. And so that's the same. This is a negative 1 hanging out here. That's the same as 6i plus 12 times 1 plus i. Because it's negative 12 times negative 1. And then we're just foiling again. 6i plus 6i squared plus 12, plus 12i. 